Hello everyone. Today I will talk about something more exciting, the quick fix list. If you have never heard of this term, congratulations. Your Ving skill will go up one level today. If you have heard of this term and you know all the blue words on the screen, then this video may be too easy for you. Okay, let me first tell you what the quick fix list is. This is one of the uh, lists Ving man manages internally. So each item in this list will be a file location. It contains a file name, row number, column number, and some text. So for you, the important information might be the text. But for Vim, the important information is the file location. And it uses that information to jump between different uh, locations. If you have never used the quick fix before or quick fix list before, you may have many questions at this point. For example, how do we generate file locations? How do we load them into the quick fix list? And uh, uh, most importantly, why do we care about this? So let me tell you four usage cases for the quick fix list. The first one is to do searches. Uh, you can imagine the search result will be in the format of file name, row number, column number, and text. Um, the second usage is to fix compilation errors. Say we have a C, C code, and we can uh, we do we compile it and got ten errors. We can load the errors into the quick fix list, and cycle through them and fix the fix them one by one. This is the traditional way to use it, and this is how Quick Fix List got its name. The third usage case is to fix uh, unit test errors. Uh, the test errors will be in the format of file name, row number, column number, and the error message. So we can load them and uh, fix them one by one. The linting error is the same idea. I will show you uh, examples of the four cases in the terminal. By the way, if you like content like this, please like and subscribe. OK, so um, let's go to a repo and bring up some file. Uh, let me first show you the, the search feature. To do that, we need to run the bing grab command. Uh, this is kind of a grab. And the output will automatically goes into the quick fix list. The, the search command itself is similar to the Vim search and replace. Say we do uh, a search for a function, get repos. And we do uh, the percentage sign, which means only search in the current file. If you do that, uh, we automatically go to the first match. And uh, you can see there are three matches. So. Uh, in order to go to the next one, we do C next. To go to the previous one, we do C previous. Uh, and you can do the shortcut CN for C next and the CP for C previous. You can also do C open to open up the quick fix list window. Here you can see uh, each line is in the format of file name, row number, column number, and some text. And the text in this case is the, the line that matches. OK, if we do CN, you can see both the uh, quick fixed window and the main window gets updated. OK, so these commands are used so often that people define uh, key bindings for them. So for next, uh, we can do square bracket Q. And for the previous one, we can do square bracket uh, uh, left square bracket Q. So here, Q stands for quick fix. Uh, this binding actually comes from a plugin called Vim Unimpaired, written by Tim Pope. You can see it's very popular on GitHub. So here, he not only defined uh, the small Q, he also defined the capital Q, uh, which means go to the very end of the quick fix list or the very beginning of the quick fix list. Uh, 
so in this plugin, he actually defined many other useful key bindings. You should definitely check out the documentation. Uh, for example, one of them that I use quite often is to uh, is a square bracket uh, space, which adds an empty line below the current line, or the left square bracket space, which adds an empty line above the current line. Okay, so you may wonder uh, why don't we just do the star and then cycle through the matches by n. Um, that's definitely a useful binding, but uh, for wing grab, you can not only do one word, you can do multiple words, and you can do a regular expression as well. And the search and replace pattern actually uh, can do more powerful things, which I won't talk about in this video. So here I will only uh, show you one, one more basic usage which is to uh, search files, uh, search multiple files within the current folder. So uh, you can see the current glob pattern will search all the Python files within the current directory recursively. So if we do that, uh, you can see we got 21 matches. And we can cycle through them. You can see we already go to a different file. And if we open up C, uh, the, the quick fix window, you can see we have many matches across different files. Okay, that's about it for the search feature. Let's go to the uh, fixing compilation error example. So for that, uh, let's create a new folder and write some uh, C++ code. So here I will uh, deliberately make some mistakes and show you the workflow of uh, how to fixing them, how to fix them using the quick fix list. Uh, say we just do a main function, just type, uh, print out some lines, and we can also. Uh, access a variable that doesn't exist. Okay, let's create a make file. And then we just compile it. Okay, now at this point, we can trigger the make file by uh, make inside the bin. And you can see we get two errors. And it, it, uh, the errors automatically loads into the quick fix list, and we are at the first one, which says the C out is unscoped. So while we are here, we can fix it, fix it and we can cycle through uh, the errors. Now we actually go to a different file. This is because the, the stack, stack depth uh, is maybe bigger than one. You can just keep cycling. Now we are the second one, which says uh, this is undeclared. Okay, we add a type here. Oh, by the way, we can do C open, and you can see the the format is file name, uh, row number, column number, and uh, some error information. Okay, so at this point we can make again. Uh, uh, so mk is a shortcut for make. OK, now we don't have errors anymore. That's how we fix it. So I, put, I hope you already see the value of the quick fix list. Here, you don't need to leave the, the Vim, and you can just do everything uh, inside here and, uh, and very efficiently jump through different errors. Uh, OK, let me also do a recap. So um, the vim grab command will load the output to the quick fix list. And the make command will also load the output to the quick fix list. OK, now let me uh, show you the next example, which is to fix unit test errors. Uh, so here, I actually have a, a Python repo. But I always have the habit uh, of creating a make file. And you can see the test target here 
runs pytest. Uh, okay, so we can do make test, and the output will automatically go to uh, the quick fix list. But before that, let me uh, create some errors first. So we are set zero here. Uh, let me also create one in a different file. Say we also do a so zero here. Okay, now if we do make test, it will it will run the pi test, and uh, hopefully we'll see two errors. And we do two assertion errors. Okay. Uh, now we can cycle through them. Yeah, the two assertion errors. Okay, and we can definitely fix them. Um, so suppose you don't have a make file, and you still want to run pytest uh, and use quick fix list. There is a hack uh, which is set make program. Uh, so here we can set it to be pytest. So if you do that, and if you do make, it will run pytest and the output will load into quick fix list automatically. So now you see we uh, we have the exact the same uh, results and we can cycle through them. And if we do see open, they are also in the format of uh, 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 the the file name and the line number and some errors. Uh, okay, so you can see uh, there's nothing preventing us from uh, typing some other programs here, say flake8. Now if we do make, it will uh, trigger the linting and we get linting errors. And we can cycle through them. Oh, there are a lot of linting errors here. Let's see what's the last one. Uh, okay, so it needs two blank lines. Okay, we can just add one here. Okay, um, now we can, that's how we do the linting error, uh, the fixed linting errors. Uh, okay, that's basically what I want to talk about today. Let me tell you one more thing. Uh, so for the make program, it it can be anything, but you need to make sure the the output has the format of file name, row number, column number, and some text, or at least uh, it can be turned into that form. Because uh, uh, there's some advanced trick where you can do post processing of of the the program output, and then turn them into the correct form. I won't talk about that here. Okay, um, so that's about it for today. I uh, hope this is something useful for you. If you like the content, please like and subscribe. And if you uh, have some any request on Vim, uh, you can leave a comment there. I will also keep making Vim videos. Hopefully it will touch something that you don't know before. Okay, that's about it for today. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.